so I just I just feel like babbling so if I've blocked you from here I apologize I wish I could re-add you if you're angry with me and, and because I've blocked you from here you know in the benzo groups you know what I started my name on Facebook is everyone from the groups know me as Sandy as Sandra my my legal name is Audrey and about nine years I wanted to legally change my name I um I don't feel I, I've never liked my real name Sandy is my second name and I started using Sandy with people me that I was meeting in real life some of the people I was meeting I thought I'm gonna change my name and then I'm gonna legally change my name my health was declining and I wasn't acknowledging I, I couldn't really acknowledge it I thought I just wasn't feeling well you know I couldn't recognize that it was progressively getting worse and but anyways I had I been feeling well I would have legally changed it and I would have been doing more of the things I wanted to do and one of the one of the things was to legally change my name and I used um Sandy as my name in the groups and um and so anybody I do know that from the groups know me as Sandra or Sandy and I like that I feel I like that I I don't feel like I'm that person that I used to be I don't I don't someone calls me Audrey and like everybody anybody in real life here or on Facebook that knows me has known me before calls me Audrey and I don't relate to it it's it's odd I don't I don't like it but you know that's all anyone has ever known me as so um so you can call me anything you want I prefer Sandy I prefer Sandra I don't feel like Audrey I'm not that person I used to be I never did like my name you know um I never really felt like I don't just don't like it I just I don't know why I, I'm not that person I was and I don't know it's just never fond of it so uh, uh anyone who knows me from the groups calls me Sandra Sandry Sandry Sandra or Sandy and I like it that's what I prefer but if someone calls me Audrey I don't care um when I joined the groups too and I want to say this too because there's lots of people when I joined the groups this these are my exact thoughts because I think lots of people are were angry with me because I wouldn't accept their friend requests oh now I remember what I wanted to say when I joined Facebook I was sleeping three or four hours a night when I joined Facebook I was not well at all I did I wasn't ready for social media I was holding out I didn't want I didn't want to join Facebook I be as as a person becomes sicker you you begin to drop out of society you begin to drop out of your life I didn't notice it was happening but as you become sicker and progressively worse whether you know it or not you start to drop out of your life and I joined Facebook and I was seriously sleep deprived so I wasn't even myself really when I joined Facebook and things got pro progressively progressively worse to the point I was you know 
sleeping one or two hours a night. And that's the mental shape I was in when I joined the benzo groups. I was in fight or flight, sleeping only one or two hours a night every 24 hours. And I wasn't comfortable with Facebook. I didn't know how people behaved on Facebook. I didn't know the social rules. It was all, it was new to all of us. And, and when you're sleeping, you know, three hours a night or one or two hours a night, you're even more clueless with social rules. And there was no one to ask, you know, like I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an adult. I'm a, there was no one to ask. And it was really hard for me to like mentally navigate Facebook. So when I joined the Benzo groups, I was sleeping one or two hours a night in fight or flight in, well, um, when I joined the Benzo groups, what am I trying to say here? Uh, I was in tons of groups and like literally I had a couple hundred Facebook friend requests in, in the year or two that I was there, the two, almost two years in the groups. I just, I, I, I was a wreck. I was just, I was in fight or flight. I was often sleeping zero hours a night in acute withdrawal. I wasn't accepting any friend requests. And I know I, 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 I still can't navigate it. I, I, I'm only sleeping, you know, two or three hours a night now. I still can't really navigate what the social rules were and are. Um, so I had a lot of people mad. At, I didn't know. I didn't realize. I thought that people would just wait or wait for me to friend request them. I had a lot of friend requests and I didn't accept any of them. And I wanted to lay low. I truly thought I was dying. And I truly didn't think I was going to live most of the time while I was in the groups. And I didn't accept any friend requests until near the end before I left the groups. There was lots of people I liked and I was fond of. And I, in my mind, I thought when I get well, I'm going to start accepting friend requests. That never happened. And then near the end, I friended a bunch of people, but I never really got a chance to know anyone really well. There's lots of people that I really like. There's still people that I ha never friended that I, I've wanted to. And I ha kind of had a running list in my, in my mind who I would like to get to know after I got through the worst of it, you know? And uh, clearly that didn't work out for me. And, uh, I think people were mad at me because I didn't friend them. And people, some people told me they were mad at me. They didn't understand why I wouldn't accept their friend request. And, you know, there was lots of lashing back, lashing, in, lashing out in the groups. And I was doing it. I was, I was, there was times I was fighting for my life. There was times people were really rude and I was rude back. Or I was misunderstanding things and it was just a, a crap show. It was, it was bad, you know, and there are people I'd like to apologize. I don't remember. There's lots of conversations I don't remember. There's a lots of conversations I do remember that were really bad. Um, but none of that matters, you know, when, when, time, time goes on and, and none of it matters. There's people I'd most certainly be willing to apologize to if I hurt their feelings. There's people that, you know, a couple that I would like an apology from, but, um, honestly, that some people were out of their minds making 
tons of fake profiles <clears throat> and targeting people and, and sending evil messages to people that they should just finish their lives off and just stuff that I don't even want to talk about, just awful, awful stuff. And that's what we were living with online in in these groups. These groups, for some of us, were all we had. I was so ill and like stopping breathing and, and screaming and begging for help that there were admins that didn't want me around because I was frightening people. And always when I was making posts, there was always new people around, new new people to withdrawal that would read my posts and be terrified that what was happening to me was going to happen to them. And I, I couldn't control that. And nobody else knew how to control that too. So I would try to downplay what I was going through. And that, you know, didn't work. It never works if you minimize what you're going through. You don't get the feedback you need. Um, so anyways, I'm just, I'm talking about, I don't even know what I'm trying to get across. I, I, I guess I regret that I never got to know anyone real well. I was deleting people too from my friends list. I was in fight or flight. I was, you know, uh, I regret that. There's people I regretted from, uh, I regret um, unfriending, uh, you know, what, what can I say? I don't think you, you or I can predict how we would think or behave if we were sleeping zero or one or two hours a night. And that's, <clears throat> that's a fact. You think you're going to be able to hold it together mentally and emotionally? You know what? That's unlikely. I was like that for over almost three and a half years. Sleeping zero or one or two hours a night. So, and there's lots of it I don't remember. But also I've seen people use that against us too. <coughs> I've seen people make up stuff and say, well, you said such and such. You just don't remember. I've literally had people make stuff up right in front of my face about, you know, uh, and, I, and I can prove that it's not true. So I've seen people use that against us when we're this ill and vulnerable. And it is, it, it's evil and it, it's ga gaslighting. It's taking advantage of someone that's really ill. I, I've also had, you know, like to switch gears here, being this ill and and really in medical crisis, you know, when we find out people are lying to us, uh, like a neighbor looking right at me and I know she's lying to me about something, when, when, when you're already in fight or flight, you've, you've got someone like practically lashing out like an animal, like not out, not physically or, but inside me, when I find out when I'm this sleep deprived and I'm finding out someone's deceiving me and lying to me, I feel just, just the fight or flight just shoots right up, you know, and the self-protection mode kicks in even more. So I feel like I have to protect myself more. Uh, you know, a doctor looking at me and lying to me, and I know they're lying, or I find out that they're lying to me. I, this is just awful to be this sick and sleep deprived and finding out, you know, a doctor's lied to me. I'll, I'll give you a, a really insignificant example. I had this new doctor, <clears throat> um, and I said to her, and I'm trying to find ways to get well without powerful medications or I'm trying to research what's actually happening to me, what kind of damage has been done and what, what what's wrong with my breathing and this and that. And, and there's an integrative doctor here, uh, but you can only see them every three months. And anyways, I saw that guy a few times. And he was, you know, I was really impressed. Nice guy. 
integrative medicine, meaning their first line of treatment is not pharmaceuticals. They'll try everything prior to pharmaceuticals like diet and supplements and stuff. And they are an MD, a medical doctor. So I've, I have great respect for this guy. So I say to this new female doctor of mine, oh, and, you know, she's really tense and really, you know, um, with her, I, I, I have two, I have three sisters. Two of them are like this. With her, I felt like I was emotionally tiptoeing around her to not set her off. You know, people like that, that you emotionally, you emotionally or mentally fear them because you're afraid of the shoe dropping. When I was in that situation with her, I didn't realize, I didn't really, it didn't really, I didn't really realize that I was emotionally afraid of this woman. I, I felt like I was tiptoeing around her not to rock the boat, you know, people like that. They're afraid of them snapping or just getting angry or whatever. So I said to her, oh, um, uh, I said, do you know Dr. Uh, so-and-so? He's an integrative doctor. Do you know him? And she said, yeah, actually, I know him really well, really, really well. And I said, oh, okay, that's cool. And I didn't know why was she being tense and weird about it. And I, so I dismissed it. My mind dismissed it. And that's what we do. And we shouldn't be dismissing anything like that. And why would she talk that way? Why would she, why would she look at me like a, with a mean look while she's saying that, right? So weeks later, I had an appointment with this guy and we chatted and stuff. And, um, I said, oh, do you know Dr. So-and-so? And he said, no. I was at a thing once, a, a banquet or some function, and somebody introduced me to her, but I don't know her at all. I said, oh, because she told me that she knows you really, really well, So, and you're good friends. He said, wow, that's weird. I wonder why she would say that. So why would she say that? And, you know, relationships are built on trust, right? If I, if you're my new family doctor now and you're acting weird and you're lying, I know that you're lying to me. Why would I trust you at all? Why would I trust you with my health or what you're telling me about resources or medications or uh, other doctors in the city? Why would, why would you break that trust? And lie to me and tell me you're, you know, another physician really, really well when they don't even know who you are. When they've met you, someone introduced you once and they said, oh, hi. Like, what is that about, right? So you got a patient in fight or flight, absolutely fighting for their lives in fight or flight. And you break that trust. Why? Like, just, just random lying, right? You know, I just... But it's that, you know, when our gut, when our mind picks up on something, wait a minute, something's wrong, something's wrong. And we say to ourselves, no, it's okay. Just, just push forward, overlook it. It's just a glitch. It's, it's never a glitch. Our alarm system is telling us something, something's wrong. And it proceeded to get very wrong with this lady with other things that were much worse than that. So, I don't know, I feel, I feel like so many things went wrong and I was so ill and truly couldn't control what was happening. I couldn't, I couldn't, 
you know, mentally navigate anything on zero or one or two hours of sleep. It's been incredible. It's been a hard road. It's It's been impossible getting help. You know, the the fight or flight, the trauma aspect of all of this, the trauma aspect of of medication injury, acute withdrawal, acute pause, post acute withdrawal syndrome. I'm so ill. I don't sleep. Uh, uh, the internal tremors are like this. Breathing issues. Uh, you know, the trust issues that, you know, there's, when you're in acute, you don't feel safe. And then all the, all the crap that was happens, that was happening in those groups, your trust is shattered and you don't know who to trust. And lots of us have left the groups for that reason. It's hard. It's not that people are bad. There's some bad apples, you know, there's some bad apples and in the groups. And I'm sure they were bad asses in grade seven and causing trouble for people. And they were the bullies and shaming people and, you know, targeting people. And, and they're the bullies in the workplace. And, you know, but it just, it, it's like a, it can be like a drop of ink to a glass of water, you know? Um, but I don't know. It's just, it, it puts people who are already in fight or flight into worse fight or flight. And uh, you know what? I'm still in fight or flight. I'm still in a state of trauma trying to get help and I don't know I wish I would have made connections and closer friends in the groups I you know what I'm still only sleeping two or three hours and I feel I uh it's so hard to connect with people when you're not yourself and you're not your your true self you're not holding back but you're unable to be your true self when you're so so ill you're not acting like your normal self you're not calm you're not relaxed you're not you know giving and loving and you're not you, your normal self can't come out when you're you know i'm just so ill right now I wasn't friending people because I didn't think I was going to survive. That's the honest to God truth. I didn't think I was going to live. And I thought it's unfair to get close to these people. And if I don't survive, I'm going to further traumatize people. That's honestly the thoughts that I was having. And my thoughts were to spare the people. Don't even get close to people if you're not going to make it. There are people I miss from the groups. But I also feel like I'm not getting well. And I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've made a lot of mistakes and I don't know. I don't think I could have done any better being this sick. I just tried the best I could. Here I sit at four in the afternoon. I don't have the strength to get dressed. I'm infected. I just, I can't get on top of things. I don't sleep. The internal shaking, my, my breathing is screwed up. What do 40 years being on these medications do to people uh what does with uh, all sorts of terrible things terrible damage has happened to me that nobody wants to acknowledge 
I, I don't know how to survive without support, without hands-on support and love and support and encouragement. Even if I went back to the Benzo groups at this point, I'm so ill that it scares new people. I'm three years off and a year off of Zabaclone and fighting for my life and looking for hope, looking for support, looking for hands-on help. I'm at the end and fighting for my life, weak and sick. I don't know what's happening to me. I bet you anything my oximeter is in the other room. I bet you anything my oxygen's low. I'm not doing anything wrong. I eat cleaner than any doctor I know. I exercised until the bitter end, until I couldn't anymore. I've always taken the best care I could. What I did wrong was I took pharmaceuticals that doctors gave me. That's what I. That's where I went wrong.